There goes Obama again, that deluded lefty from America, with one of his new rants on global warming. He now claims global warming is accelerating, and those that don't think so are flat earthers. The only explanation I can think of is he's listening to Holdren, his sidekick. Holdren's a eugenicist from way back. And uh, Mann and probably Hansen, you know, a guy that should be in a straitjacket. Here's the reality. We're talking not bullshit the models here, we're talking reality. So, you know, science, data and reality. Obama's wrong. No one agrees with him. You know, no scientist agrees with him. No, no, no normal scientist agrees with him. At the Senate hearing in July last year, even the alarmist scientists didn't agree with him. All the data says it's decelerating or stopped. So global warming's either decelerated dramatically or completely stopped, depending which data set you, you look at. I'm talking about air temperatures, ocean heat content, or you can even look at eustatic sea level rise. They've all slowed or stopped or reversed. So what he's saying is complete and utter bunkum. The only thing that's accelerating is our CO2 emissions. They're accelerating, but not because of the US, because of China and developing countries. So it's just more fiction, alarmism, nonsense, and uh, massive tax hikes are going to be the result on the U.S. population. So it's determined to wreck and destroy the U.S. economy. Uh, this appears to be his aim. Put as many people out of work and dependent on him as possible. If you look at the um, Hadcroft 3 graph here, can any normal person look at that and say it's accelerating? It's decelerating. And look at the ocean heat content. Most of it is made up, but the data we definitely know about from 2003 to, to the present because of the Argo measurements, it's been flat, completely flat. Now the, so even, even if you accept all this dodgy data before then, it's decelerating, not accelerating. It's stopped. Over the past eight years, the United States has reduced our total carbon pollution more than any other nation on Earth. Obama's actually talking a little bit of truth here. Um, of course, he's spinning it to benefit himself because uh, it's not because of him that uh, uh, U.S. CO2 emissions have fallen. It's in spite of his policies, not because of them. It's nothing to do with windmills and solar panels and all the other money is thrown to the wind. It's because of fracking gas. The CO2 emissions from a gas power plant is about half of the coal CO2 emissions. This is a fact. And it's only because of the um, large investments private companies are making in fracking in America to um, release gas from otherwise inaccessible strata. Um, that this has happened. It's in spite of Obama's policies, not because of them. But he doesn't mind taking the credit. The best way for the US to slash CO2 emissions, if it really wants to, is for Obama to allow uh, oil and gas mining on federal lands, which is so far not, not allowing. Um, and they should forget about windmills and solar power, which do nothing at all. Here's some graphs I'm just showing you as I'm talking. One shows the US carbon dioxide emissions from energy consumption, which uh, has fallen dramatically, uh, by far more than any other country on the planet has fallen. US emissions are now less than half of China's. That's right, less than 50% of China's CO2 emissions. The second graph I'm showing you here is U.S. percentage of global CO2 emissions, which again is half what it was in 1959. 
And the third and last graph I'm showing you here is US per capita carbon emissions, showing you that uh, US per capita carbon emissions peaked in 1972 and have been falling since then. And in a more recent period, the last decade or so, dramatically, again due to uh, gas fracked from shale, shale strata. But we have to act with more urgency because the changing climate is already harming western communities struggling with drought and coastal cities dealing with floods. Incredibly here Obama says we have to act with more urgency. Of course referring to the USA itself. Uh, and yet global temperatures have stalled. US emissions are on Obama's own reduction track that is set in 2009. Back then he proposed that US emissions by 2020 should be 14% below 2005's baseline. And as you can see on this chart here, the US uh, emissions are well below that track. In fact, uh, he's going to reach his emissions target three years early. 2017. So given that the US has already done much more than any other country in the world as far as cutting CO2 emissions and that China, China's emissions are more than double the US emissions, you know, Obama's got delusions of grandeur. He thinks he can stop hurricanes which aren't happening anyway and he can stop the oceans from rising and all this you know is uh, the US emissions the reality is the US emissions are only 14% of world emissions today and uh, Asia's emissions dwarf the US emissions so there's very very little the US can do even, even if the US cut its emissions to zero um, Asia would make that up in a few years China's emissions have gone up by more than the total U.S. emissions just in the last 12 years. But the debate is settled. Climate change is a fact. Saying climate change is a fact is, uh, well, it's a bit silly, really. I mean, everyone knows that climate change is, is a fact. Is it talking about dangerous global warming caused by our CO2? I guess he is. I guess that's what he's talking about. If that's the case, if that's what he's claiming, well, before you can have climate change caused by CO2, you have to have global warming. CO2 cannot cause climate change unless it causes global warming first. And just look at this graph. You can see the IPCC prediction, that solid red line made in 1991. Well, it's been totally incorrect. Uh, the actual warming as measured by UAH and Hadcrit has been well, less than one third of the uh, IPCC's best prediction in 1991. Therefore, at best, the CO2 warming is one third of what they thought it would be. They thought it would be, say, three and a half degrees so about 2100 so you can say well the actual climate sensitivity then is going to be about one degree centigrade by 2100 which is actually beneficial according to almost all the um, economics professors that have done work on this they say that up to two degrees by 2100 is net beneficial for both the environment and humanity so Obama's actually preventing something, or trying to prevent something that is actually going to be net beneficial. And when our children's children look us in the eye and ask if we did all we could to leave them a safer, more stable world with new sources of energy, I want us to be able to say, yes, we did. 